Hello, now we are on to chapter 22 on Elements of Brie, Earth Treasures. Brie didn't know how long she was knocked out for, but her entire body ached when she finally came to. She was still covered in sticky worm insides and she smelt horrible. She sat up and looked around the room. She was in a small dirt chamber with a couple of torches on the walls and a tunnel at the far end leading to another area. Near her feet was a large hole in the wall with large chunks of leftover worm bits hanging out of it. She thought she could still see some parts of the large cactus as well, but everything was such a mess, it was hard to tell. She finally stood up and limped over to the wall. She still had a couple of cactus spikes in her arm and one in her shoulder. She pulled them out, crying out loud as she did so. Checking her weapons, she noted that she had lost her bow, but settled a couple of arrows in the quiver. Her slingshot was okay, but covered in worm insides and she lost most of the rosarium chunks and pebbles, including the coin Shen had given her. It seemed a waste to have the enchanted hip pack when nothing would stay in it. However, she still had her mother's dagger, so she pulled that out. Looking back at the hole where the monster's remains, she wondered why these creatures didn't turn to dust and leave rosarium when they died. Bree decided it would be she would have to be answered another time, and made her way down the tunnel across from the hole she arrived in. Standing at the entrance, she called out for Blaze and Odeon and heard no response. As she waited to hear anything, she noticed a symbol carved into the wall near her. That one right there. She had never seen anything like that symbol before and ran her hands along the grooves. She instantly felt a hum coming from the charm around her neck and the word Earth formed in her mind. She was in the Temple of Earth, in the Earth Caves, under the Gaian Desert. She limped down the tunnel and came into another room lit by more torches. Inside were smaller versions of the cacti on the surface, but no, these no bigger than a loaf of bread. A few turned and fired tiny spikes at her, so she either squished them with her foot or stabbed them with her dagger. It felt weird to, to kill small plants, but it seemed as though, mo like most things in Goal, wanted her to die. Again, she noticed that no rosarium was being left behind. The next few rooms were similar, with the same earth symbol carved in them. There were more baby cacti, a room with large spiders that ran away when she got near, and one room with many small quicksand traps. There were spiders in that room too, but when they crawled over the traps, the sand swallowed them up in seconds. Bree finally emerged into a room that was about the size of a royal dining hall. To her right was a large staircase leading up to the roof where a massive stone slab rested. It took her a moment to realize that that was the true entrance to the Earth Temple. She had been brought in through an accidental secret entrance. She was standing in an upper walkway with the lower section of the room sunken into the floor below her. Any other day, she would just jump down into the lower section, but with her body still aching from the cacti spines, she decided that one of the four sets of stairs down would be best. In the middle of the room, in the center of the sunken area, was a treasure chest covered in raised Golian writing. Brie approached it and tried to open it. It was locked. She started the writing, and all it said was that the chest could be opened with the power of the earth. She knew no magic, so she searched around for a key. Nothing was near, so she examined the chest again. The lock had a strange shape, and after running her fingers over the keyhole, she realized that she had the key all along. She pulled out her mom's dagger and stared at it. The blaze was jagged, but looked like it could fit into the lock. She slowly put the blade in and found it fit perfectly. Once she got to the hilt, she turned the handle. It opened with a loud clang. The handle dropped to the floor as the blade was now gone. Bree raised the lid and looked inside. In the bottom was a shiny metal cylinder that looked like a sword handle and a shield. She looked into the lid and saw these words, Royal Golian Mystic Sword and Earth Shield. She took the shield and held it on her arm. It covered most of her upper body, but she marveled at how light it felt. Taking the sword handle, she noticed that there was no blade. Am I supposed to use this? She asked out loud. The charm around her neck began to hum again and the end of the handle glowed. A strange liquid appeared at the end and formed a long blade. The sword she was holding was light and could be used quite easily. She did some moves with it and stared at it. She looked back into the treasure chest for a sheath and found none. She wondered how she would transport the sword without holding it the whole time. As she thought this, the blade melted back into the handle and returned to how she found it. She chuckled in glee and placed the hilt into her hip pack. Looking down at the empty hilt of her mother's dagger, she wondered if it had been her mother's plan all along. She took the empty hilt and placed it in her backpack. Brie limped back up the stairs and made her way over to the opposite side of the room. It was then she noticed some small rock platforms high near the roof. 
Each of them were below a false wall, hiding a doorway, like the one in the stronghold. Even if she didn't have any leg pain, she would never be able to jump that high. Squinting, she could make out a small metal loop embedded in the wall by each of the hidden doors. She had no clue how to get up there. Maybe she had a bow. Tied to some string with her, one of her remaining arrows, maybe she could hit the loops. But they were very small. She also decided about it, to worry about it later and focus on the rest of the room. She could see three more tunnels leading to other areas of the temple. As she looked from one tunnel to the other, she felt the urge to go down the one closest to her. Once she entered the adjoining room, she could feel the pull of the charm around her neck, telling her that she was on the right path. She made her way through another couple of rooms, each of them having more of the small cacti. Without the dagger not wanting to use the sword yet, she took one of the arrows and used it to awkwardly stab at the small plants. She ended up breaking the arrow on the last mini cactus. She eventually found herself in a chamber with many pillars and an altar at the far end that had a small treasure chest on it. Surrounding the altar were three stone sculptures of knights in full armor and each holding a sharp spear. Whatever they were guarding must be important. <clears throat> Bree limped over to the altar and stood in front of the treasure chest. As she did, she felt the floor beneath her buckle and she heard a clicking sound. A rumbling filled the room and she took a step back. All three of the stone knights suddenly shifted, shattered most of the rock off their body, and came to life. Doo -doo -doo.